Tom walked through the front door of his country house mid-morning on Wednesday. He hasn't been there since last Sunday. All he wanted to do was pick up some things and leave again. He expected his wife Peggy to go to work. Tom went into the kitchen to make a cup of coffee and noticed the handcuffs and a strip of duct tape still lying on the table where he had left them. The dish towel was still on the floor, where he had thrown it after wiping his face. The video camera was still on the tripod next to the kitchen table. The chair he had broken and knocked over was still lying on the floor. Instead of coffee, he opened the refrigerator and took out a bottle of Diet Coke. Where the hell have you been? Peggy asked angrily, entering the kitchen. Tom didn't look at her or answer. He walked past her into the bedroom to gather some clothes, but she grabbed his arm. I asked you a question, she said angrily. Tom stopped and turned to look at her. The woman he married seven years ago. The woman he loved, but now the woman who devastated him. Let me go, he answered softly. Peg looked at him. There was no expression on his face. Tom's eyes seemed dull and lifeless. She let go of his hand and let him pass. Peg grabbed the handcuffs, tape, and dish towel, then walked over to the trash can and unceremoniously tossed them in there. She walked over to the tripod and unscrewed the mounting bracket, placing the video camera on the table, then folded the tripod and placed it next to her. Peggy headed to the bedroom. Tom had a large open suitcase on the bed and was packing his things. What are you doing, Tom? I'm packing my things, he answered and continued. Another business trip? She asked sarcastically. No. Then where are you going? Tom stopped and looked at her. His expression was still blank. What does it matter? You are my husband. I have a right to know. Peg, you gave up that right last Sunday afternoon? Tom added a few more items and closed the bag. He picked her up and carried her into the living room, placing her near the door, and then headed into the office. Peggy followed him. He placed some papers from the desk into his briefcase and closed it, then packed his laptop and power cord into his computer bag. Tom walked over to the kitchen table and picked up the video camera. He opened it, finding the SD card still there. Is this what you wrote down on Sunday? Peggy smiled. A souvenir to remember your retribution. Very caring. Thank you. Tom still remained impassive. Tom, damn it. Talk to me, she shouted. Tom looked at her, his face flushed. What did you do to me? Why are you leaving? She asked. Peg, sit at the table with me. Tom opened his computer bag and placed the laptop on the table, then sat down in front of it. He motioned for Peggy to sit next to him. As soon as she sat down, he inserted the SD card into the slot. Let's look at this. Then we'll talk. Tom started recording. The video footage showed a chair pushed away from the kitchen table on the right and an empty kitchen table on the left. Welcome home, baby. Let's go to the kitchen. I have a surprise that I promised you on the phone. Tom appeared on stage, smiling. Peggy approached him, dressed in a short, thin robe. Her hair and makeup were immaculate, and her feet were bare. She held handcuffs in her hands and smiled. Sit on the chair. Tom sat smiling at her. Peggy went behind the chair and squatted down to handcuff him. Her robe fell open, revealing nothing underneath. She threaded one wrist into the cuff, threaded the chain through the back of the chair, then secured the other wrist. Peggy walked out of frame, then returned a moment later and covered his mouth with a strip of duct tape. His smile was visible even with the duct tape on. She stood in front of him and threw her robe to the floor. Tom's eyes widened in admiration at the sight before him. Are you ready for your surprise? She asked, smiling. Tom nodded. We're ready here, she shouted. A moment later, footsteps were heard approaching them. Tom turned his head towards the sound. A man wearing Tom's robe entered the room. Tom's smile turned into a look of shock on his face. Honey, you remember Joey from my work, don't you? Peggy walked over to Joey and untied the belt on his robe, then pulled it off his shoulders and dropped it into Tom's lap. Joey was naked under his robe. She knelt down in front of Joey and began to please him masculine dignity below the belt. Oh, fuck, that feels so good, Joey moaned. Peggy looked at Tom. And it tastes good too, Joey. 
Are you following us, Tom? I wouldn't want you to miss any of this, she asked with an evil grin on her face. Tom paused the video and looked at Peggy. Why? You know exactly why. Peggy, I don't know a damn thing what you're talking about. Tom still remained impassive. Before we got married, I told you I would do this. Tom was puzzled. Your words make no sense. What did it all mean? Before we got married, I told you that if you ever cheated on me, I would have sex as revenge and I would do it right in front of you. You remember this, don't you? So that's what it's all about? This is your payback. I promised and kept it, she said, as if nothing had happened. Do you think I cheated on you? I know you cheated on me, asshole. Okay, I'll ask. Peggy, when did I ever cheat on you? Don't try to put this crap on me. You know exactly when, where, and with whom. Tom took out the SD card and put it in his bag. He closed the laptop and stuffed it into his bag, then zipped it up. He turned to face Peggy. Either tell me what the hell you're talking about, or I'm leaving right now. Tom was upset. Okay, don't act innocent. While you were on this so-called business trip last week, I got a call from Jerry's wife, Jill. She told me that you and Jerry spent a week in bed with a couple of sluts. Jill told you this? She did it. What evidence did she provide you with? Stop talking nonsense about the poor victim, Tom. You know what you did. So you had sex in front of me in retaliation based on a phone call? From someone I trust? Yes, I did it. Based only on her words... No actual evidence? I didn't need anything. Peg, you handcuffed me. Had sex with a man right in front of me. Humiliated me all based on something someone told you? Payback. That's exactly what I did. Tom shook his head, still puzzled. You didn't tell me why. You didn't talk to me about this. You decided that I was guilty and deserved punishment and then carried it out without any evidence at all. Yes, so now we're even. Even? Yes, even. Not that it matters right now, but there are a couple of things I would like to say. Continue. I'm listening. I was at a conference all last week. Jerry wasn't even there. He was fired from the group two months ago for having an affair with a secretary in the office, and I haven't seen or heard from him since he left. I was a speaker at the conference. I sat at a table on stage from 7 in the morning until 10 at night, every day of the conference. The entire week was recorded on video. After the meetings, the group met every day until midnight to discuss and plan for the next day. I have many witnesses regarding my whereabouts. I never left the hotel until I went to the airport after it was all over. So you deny it? Fully. I do not trust you. Obviously. I have proof of where I was and what I was doing all this time, and you really have a phone call from someone who wasn't even there as proof. I think it's a pretty lousy deal. But I believe her. What we believe doesn't make it a fact. I believed I was married to the most wonderful, loving woman in the world. What I learned on Sunday is that I am married to a vicious, evil woman who thinks so little of me that she has both physically and emotionally abused me without any actual evidence of any wrongdoing. Peggy didn't answer. I'm leaving now. You will hear from my lawyer in the next few days. I'm not going to divorce you. That's what it was all for. Now we're even. Peggy, I didn't cheat on you. Were you not listening? I'm not an idiot. Of course I listened. Do you still think what you did was justified? I'm sure. Then we have nothing more to discuss. Just fucking call Jill and find out what evidence she had. I'd really like to know. Although in reality, now it doesn't really matter. Without saying another word, Tom left the house. He went to his hotel room and burned the video onto three DVDs. Tom has already made an appointment with his lawyer and went to where he began the divorce proceedings. The reason for filing the application would be adultery. He gave a copy of the DVD to his lawyer. The prenuptial agreement would be valid and supported by DVD evidence. The lawyer made suggestions about financial matters that needed to be addressed immediately, and Tom dealt with them immediately after leaving the lawyer's office. His cell phone was put on silent, and when he got to his hotel room, he checked it. 
The first call from Peggy came about five minutes after he left. Then nothing was heard for about two hours. After that, the calls rang out approximately every five minutes. He only listened to one voicemail. The first, after a two-hour break. Oh my God, Tom. I finally got through to Jill. She was drunk. Please call me. I made a mistake. Please call me. Tom deleted all her calls and voicemails without listening and then deleted her text messages and email. The calls, texts, and emails continued. He looked through the numbers as calls came in. Tom also received calls from Peggy's father, mother, and sister. He called Sean, her father, back. Hello, Sean. This is Tom. I know who the hell it is. You're not the only one who can read. What the hell did you do to my daughter? I didn't do anything to her except not answer her calls. Oh my gosh, she's hysterical. What the hell is going on? Sean, if you want to know what happened, you'll have to talk to Peggy. I'm talking to you, damn it. He was angry. You're wasting your time. Talk to her. Tom remained calm and kind to him. Did you have sex with someone or something? Talk to Peggy. You son of a bitch. I have to come over and kick your ass. Sean, listen to me. If you want to know what happened, you'll have to find out from Peggy. I will not discuss this with you or Mary or anyone else. Talk to Peggy. You're an idiot. You really cheated on her, didn't you? Goodbye, Sean. Tom finished the conversation. Sean called back almost immediately, but Tom ignored him. This was quickly followed by a call from Mary, her mother. He deleted their voicemails, then went out to dinner and returned to his room for the night. On Thursday morning, he bought a new cell phone, but kept the old one. He went to his office and took a long leave. He also gave them his new number, but asked them not to share it. When he reached the far end of town, he rented a small furnished apartment and signed a six-month lease. Tom went to the grocery store to buy food and household supplies. By the end of the day, he had cleaned up the house. His lawyer called on Friday morning. He met with his lawyer at the courthouse, signed the papers, and was given a copy for Peggy after filing. Her copy did not require a signature, but the lawyer told him to be sure there was an impartial witness to what she was served. Tom called Peggy and they agreed to meet for lunch at a restaurant they frequented. When Peggy arrived, Tom was already waiting for her at a quiet table in the back of the room. She was dressed and embellished to the nines. Peggy looked good. When she approached, he stood up. Peggy hugged him, and when she tried to kiss him, he only offered his cheek. This was not what Peggy had hoped for, and it was obvious from the look on her face. She sat down at the table facing him. Tom, I made a mistake. I want us to put this behind us and move forward. I agree. It's time to move forward. Tom refused the services of a waiter. It was Lynn. They had known her for a long time. What can I offer you to drink? She asked, smiling. Two Diet Cokes, Peggy answered. Lynn, stay a minute, Tom asked. He reached over and took the divorce papers, then handed them to Peggy. Peggy, these are divorce papers. Lynn is my witness that you were notified. Thank you, Lynn. Peggy turned pale as she looked at the papers. Lynn went to get their drinks. Tom, you said you wanted to put this behind you and move forward. That's exactly what I do. I'm moving forward. But Tom, I made a mistake. That's not what I meant. Peggy, we've been married for over seven years. Until Sunday, these were the most wonderful years of my life. I loved you like I've never loved anyone and probably never will again. Don't throw it away, Tom. We have a wonderful marriage. It was, but it won't be. Last Sunday, you destroyed both our marriage and my love. I made a mistake, can't you see it? Let me tell you what I see when I look at you or when I close my eyes. I see the woman I loved having lewd sex in front of my eyes, which her lover had on the kitchen table and which claimed that he was better than me. I see her tearing the duct tape off my mouth and trying to kiss me, her mouth still full of his seed. I see her spit in my face when I refuse the kiss and then laugh with him about it. That's what I see now, Peggy. Not the woman I treasured. You killed her that day. But Tom, it was all a mistake. No, it was done very deliberately. The reason you did it was a mistake, not the act itself. I told you that if you cheat on me, I will have revenge sex in front of you. 
You knew what would happen, and you even agreed to it. Yes, I did it knowing that it would never come to that. What did I tell you would happen if you cheated on me? Peggy looked down at the table. You said you would divorce me. Did you agree to this? Yes, but I didn't cheat on you. Tom handed her the DVD. This is for you. This is a copy of your non-cheating romp with the big manhood in Joey's pants. Tom, it wasn't cheating. It was revenge. Lynn returned with their drinks and took their lunch orders. Peggy, sex outside of marriage is adultery, and if both parties do not agree to it, it is considered adultery. We can sort this out, Tom. We'll go see a psychologist. No, Peg, we can't. You showed me the side of you that destroyed the woman I loved. You killed her as surely as if you had cut out her heart. But you didn't. Instead, you tore my heart out. I don't want a divorce. I will fight with you. On Sunday, you showed me a different side of yourself. I have another side, too. You don't want to see this. On what other side? The side where I become as vicious, indifferent, and evil as you were on Sunday. I won't use the mistake as an excuse. I will take full responsibility for what I do. You're not like that, and you know it. It's funny. I thought the same about you. Damn it, Tom. It was a mistake. No. This was a deliberate act of revenge. What did you tell your parents? I told them that we had a disagreement and that we would sort it out. Quarrel over what? Peggy looked down at the table and said nothing. Because of what, Peggy? I told them you were having an affair. You never told them the truth? No. Why? They wouldn't understand. Do you understand what? They wouldn't realize it was a mistake. Maybe it's finally dawning on me. Tom, I know what I did to you was wrong. I base this on judgment rather than fact. I know I hurt you deeply, but we can get through this. We can restore our marriage. We can leave this behind. Okay, we will leave this marriage in the past. The woman I loved no longer exists. I will fight you every step of the way. I'm saving our marriage. There's nothing to save here. Everything is over. Don't make me reveal my other side. You won't like it. You're bluffing. Don't insist, Peggy. Hire a lawyer. Ask them to consider the petition. Ask them to contact my lawyer if you have any questions. You'll be single and you can have as much Joey as you want in 90 days. This has nothing to do with Joey. Sorry, that was rude of me. My apologies. I will not leave you. Peg, you already did it. The agreement is fair. Accept it and move on. No way. Lynn brought them food. Tom handed her his credit card. She left and returned a moment later with a check to sign. Tom signed, then stood up. He never touched the food. Bon appetit, Peggy. Last Sunday I lost my appetite when you spat on me. Tom left and went to his home. On Tuesday, Peggy met with her lawyer for the first time. She was a tough nut to crack, recommended by a friend. Have a seat, Mrs. Givens. I'm Ronnie Savage. How can I help you? My husband is trying to divorce me. Did he give you documents? She asked. Last Friday. Can I look at the papers? Peggy handed her the papers. Ronnie glanced at the first page. He refers to adultery. This is true? No, it was a misunderstanding. Have you had sex with someone other than your husband? Yes, but it was a mistake. Did your husband agree to you having sex with another person? Not with this person specifically, but he agreed for me to have sex as revenge if he cheated on me. So your husband cheated on you and you had sex in revenge? Well, yes and no. Mrs. Givens, could you please clear this up for me? I actually had revenge sex, but then I found out that he didn't cheat on me. Your husband didn't cheat, but you still had sex in revenge? Yes. Mrs. Givens, this is called adultery. But I thought he was cheating. What evidence did you have? A friend told me he did it. But apparently, your friend was mistaken. Yes. Finally, someone who sees that, it was a mistake. Mrs. Givens, based on what you have told me, I am dating a woman who had sex in retaliation against her husband, based on hearsay evidence. Does he have evidence that you had sex with another person? 
Yes, I handcuffed him to a chair and made him watch. Then it's his word against yours. Is there any real evidence? I recorded all this on video. Do you have a copy of this video? Peggy handed her the DVD Tom had given her on Friday. Can I watch this? Peggy nodded. Ronnie put the DVD into the player and, after watching for just a few minutes, stopped it. I'll have to watch the whole thing, but I can do that later. Let me look at the petition first. She started reading. After a few minutes of flipping through a few pages, Ronnie looked up. I see that you signed a prenuptial agreement, and at first glance, it seems quite solid when it comes to adultery. If he changes the wording of the complaint to irreconcilable differences, we can avoid that part. I suspect this will be a difficult task. Even with the prenuptial agreement, it offers you significantly more than the law requires. Without a prenuptial agreement, you will likely be able to receive a significantly larger amount of cash. I don't want a cash payment or a divorce. I want my husband back. Did you tell him about this? Yes, he didn't even think about it. Contested divorces can be very costly for everyone involved. It won't hurt if we seek advice. Then let's do it. We can seek counseling and let him know that if he refuses, we will fight for everything. Fine. Do you have any incriminating evidence on your husband? You mean criminal stuff? Anything. He's as spotless as can be. Has he ever hit you or threatened you? He never even raised his voice to me. I'll go through the papers very carefully, watch the video, and contact you in a day or two. Does he have a copy of this DVD? Peggy nodded. It was Wednesday when Ronnie called her. Mrs. Givens, he has a pretty strong frame. The video you recorded is very damaging and you don't want any judge to see it. Let's start with what we discussed. We will offer six weeks of couples counseling. Whatever it takes, I want my husband back. Two days later, Tom's lawyer called him and asked him to come by. That afternoon, he went to the office. Tom, they requested six weeks of couples counseling. What if I refuse? They will do everything they can to fight us. I'm against it. What do you think? She hired Ronnie Savage. She's one of the best. Better than you? I am the best. Are you ready to fight? With teeth and nails, if necessary. Then let's just say no and see what happens. Keep me informed. That evening, Tom called Peggy. Peggy, I refuse the consultation. I told you that if you argue with me about this, you will see another side of me that you will not like. Why are you acting like this? Just stop this crazy scam and come home. Peg, that won't happen. This is your last chance to get off easy. I won't call you anymore. I'm fighting with you, Tom. I don't want a divorce. As you wish. Tom finished the conversation. The following Monday, Peggy filed a counterclaim. The basis was irreconcilable differences. She asked for everything. Two days later, the local school board and the school where Peggy worked were served with documents alleging improprieties between their two married teachers, Peggy Givens and Joseph Carr. Attached to the package were graphic photographs of two people having sex. An emergency school board meeting was called behind closed doors, and both were fired that same day. That same day, Joey's wife received a DVD in the mail containing the names and phone numbers of those featured in the video. She called Tom after watching the video. Hello, this is Tom Givens. This is Tammy Carr, Joey's wife. Did you send me this DVD? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, but I thought you had a right to know. When was this done? A week ago, on Sunday, at my house. Are you sitting in the chair? Yes. And the video is real? Fully. It is not mounted. Is this woman your wife? For now. I filed for divorce. That's all I needed to know. Sorry for disturbing you. Tammy hung up. Tammy's next call was to a divorce lawyer. The next day, Joey called Peggy and reprimanded her for exposing him with her act of revenge and costing him his job and possibly his marriage. Even after losing her job and receiving a call from Joey, Peggy didn't give up. When another week passed and there was no word from Tom from his lawyer, Tom took his next step. Peggy's parents and sister received a copy of the DVD in the mail. After a very short introduction to the video, they started asking Peggy questions and telling her off. Tom's old phone rang. He answered her sister's call. How could you, Tom? 
Peggy loves you. Mandy, she has a strange way of showing it. For God's sake, it was revenge sex. So she still hasn't told you the truth? What the hell is the truth? Mandy, I didn't have an affair. She got a call from a friend who said I did it. She accepted this as truth and without any evidence. Was this her revenge? Tom, Peggy is not that stupid. Okay, ask her yourself. Let her know that if she lets the divorce go through this and stops fighting it, that will be the end of it. If she continues, this is just the beginning. Can't you figure it out? Have you watched the DVD? It's just the beginning. That's all I could digest. Observe all this and then ask yourself if your husband is ready to try to reconcile. You will do this? I will, but I still think you should at least try to work this out. Mandy, you've known me since we were kids. You know I'm not a bad guy. Watch the DVD. Okay, I'll do that. Mandy hung up. About an hour later, she called back. Oh, Tom, I'm so sorry. I understand now, but I still need to talk to Peggy. Let her know that if she stops fighting the divorce, this will end. If she fights me, it will only get worse. I'll tell her. Mandy went to see Peggy in person and, having received confirmation that Tom was telling the truth, relayed his warning. Peggy was adamant in her refusal. Mandy then went and told her parents about what Peggy had done and how Tom insisted that she drop the counterclaim. Peggy's parents visited her that evening and received copies of both documents. Sean had a family friend who was a lawyer who reviewed the documents and the prenuptial agreement. His recommendation was that Peggy do exactly what Tom said and calmly take the matter to divorce court. Peggy still refused to give in. After another week, without hearing a word from his lawyer, Tom took the next step. Peggy taught Sunday school at the same church her parents attended. Each member of the women's auxiliary and church staff received a flyer in the mail containing photographs of Peggy having sex with a man other than her husband. The caption read, Should this woman teach your children? On Sunday, Peggy's parents were treated more like lepers than parishioners. After the service, the pastor took them aside for a private conversation and explained why. He also gave them a letter for Peggy, informing them that her services would no longer be needed or even welcomed. A copy of the leaflet has been attached. When they gave it to Peggy, she cried, but still refused to drop her counterclaim. Peggy told her lawyer what Tom did. Telling and showing your family was not a crime. This was clearly seen on the DVD where Peggy told Tom that she made the recording for him. Since it was his property, he could share it with any adult he wished. The flyers were sent out anonymously, so they could not be traced back to Tom without a thorough investigation. Ronnie recommended that she drop the counterclaim. Peggy's family begged her to stop. Now it was affecting their lives. Sean called Tom and shared his concerns. Tom repeated his demand to Sean. Still, Peggy insisted. A few days later, Peggy's neighbors and all their friends received similar flyers, signed only with Peggy's name and contact information. Peggy's phone and email exploded with nasty calls and messages. Debris was thrown onto her car, driveway, and lawn. Tom waited another week before posting on her social media accounts. It started with innuendo, then progressed to photos with blackouts strategically placed in all the right places. A few days later, Peggy received an email from a porn site thanking her for the video. When a news crew showed up at her door, she finally called her lawyer and dropped the countersuit. She asked for a meeting between her and Tom. Tom agreed on the condition that it be done in his lawyer's office. They met a few days later. Peggy looked like a shadow of her former self. She had lost weight and, judging by her appearance, was also sleep-deprived. Peggy, Tom said, sitting down at the table opposite her, I abandoned the counterclaim. You won. No, Peggy, I lost. I lost the woman I loved. I lost my marriage. I lost everything that was important to me. There really is a side to you that I've never seen. I'm sorry you had to see that. Tom, I don't know what to say. I can't show my face anywhere. I'll have to leave even to find a job. I can't stay here either. Everyone we knew also treated me like a leper. 
We both lost everything, didn't we? Yes, Peg, we did it. Tom's eyes were on the verge of tears. I know it's too late now, but is there anything I can do to undo what I've done? Besides figuring out how to turn back time? Yes, except for that. I don't think so, Peggy. Tom stood up to leave. Peggy stood up and held out her arms for one last hug. Tears streamed down her cheeks. Tom took a step towards her, then stopped. Tears streamed down his cheeks. I can't, Peggy. I would feel like I was cheating on the woman I loved. He stood looking at her for a moment, then turned and walked towards the door. When his hand touched the doorknob, he turned back to her. There was one thing that could help. What, Tom? Just this one time you could say, I'm sorry, just this one time. Tom left the office and her life. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.